Good morning, everyone. This is Julie McDonald with Microcom Technologies. And I would like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar with Fanville. Today's host is our very good friend, Tommy Lee, and he is their Vice President of Sales in North America, and he'll be presenting today. If anyone has any questions, please submit them in the question box, and Tommy will be able to answer them at the end of today's presentation. Tommy, thank you so much for being with Microcom again. We always look forward to your ongoing presentations with us. I am finished for now. Please go ahead and take it on over. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate the introduction. Uh, again, thank you everybody for your valued time today. I have a brief introduction, uh, which will take a, a minimal amount of time, but I believe it's it could be a transformative solution that we're bringing to the marketplace. Um, today, what I'm going to do is present a what we call a ROIP gateway introduced by Linkville. And, and, and for those who have attended our presentations in the past, Linkville is really a sub-brand of Fanville, which is what we're, we're part of. And so the relationship between the two are sort of the same. But what Linkville focuses on is our wireless technology. And when I mention ROIP gateway, what that really stands for is radio over IP. And this is an interesting gateway that really opens up the channel. And uh, for those who are on board who are, aren't familiar with Fanville, just to give you a quick understanding, uh, we've been on the, uh, in the marketplace for the past 21, 22 years building SIP endpoints. And when I build SIP endpoints, this is something that, that, that we build. And SIP endpoints is really a place where many of the SIP PBXs or cloud-based PBXs reach out and we build a metal that really touches the human being, whether it's a phone, door phone, intercoms and all that. And this is just another thing that we've done and we've been in the marketplace for 21 years, coming out with many different solutions. And this time I'm gonna introduce really our ROIP gateway, which is our W712. And I'm just gonna kind of go over some just product introductions, some product applications. If you happen to have any questions, as Julie mentioned, feel free to reach out to her or send send me a note. You know, my my name is uh, my. You can reach me via email at Tommy Lee T O M M Y dot L E E at Fanville dot com. I'll be more than happy to guide you to everything that 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 you really need to know. So, having stated that, um, let me move forward in doing this a quick industry background so that you kind of understand. In, 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 the, in the world of radios, you have things that really operate radios that's specifically for security. You have radios that's specifically for cleaners, for the reps. I mean, even when you, many of you who have traveled quite a bit and stayed at off airport parking, many people drive around in these shuttle vans that have walkie talkies that say, I just picked up three or four on the way back home so that therefore they can coordinate your car and have it ready for you when you show up. The interesting thing about all of these radios is that they operate all on a particular band and each one has their own sub uh, sub channel that they only speak within themselves. So that when you look at security, they have their own radios. When you look at say, perhaps the maintenance people and the cleaners, they have their own radios. And the only way you could reach to them is really having two separate radios adjusted to two separate bands. Unless you coordinate what channel is what, then you have to flicker back and forth. So all of these things really develop what we call a separated highway. And when you look at this image to the left, it really does show these different flows where you kind of have all of this information going back and forth and discrete. You want to talk to somebody in security, you have to have a security radio. You want to talk to somebody in maintenance and you have to have them. You want to call your driver. They're all separate radios, which you have to have. And what this Roy Gateway does is it really transforms all of these separate channels really that intertwine into this highway here, where all of a sudden this thing can now route you know, vertically. People who route vertically can now go on the go on the vertical highway, horizontally, et cetera. So this really does open up. And why is it really important? For those who are on this webinar, you're, you're very well aware that all the businesses are migrating into the old analog technology, into many SIP-based technologies, whether it's these large cloud-based PBXs from all sorts of brands to even on-prem PBXs. 
That's the new technology that all the Fortune 100 companies have adopted. But now as, the, as this technology grows, there are gaps now that still haven't addressed or bridged one form to another. And that's what this ripe gateway does. And what this ripe gateway does is it really allows this gateway to be put on the network within the local gateway. Say if you have a parking community within security, this goes on the network. And what this does is this actually ties anybody with a SIP phone, whether it be the receptionist, all the staff members, all the teachers, principals, hospital staff, hospitality, you name it, it provides them a really dual channel access to the, so that they can just lift up a SIP phone, have this pre-programmed key that has the key code. You don't want everybody calling them, but for those who have it on the key, now you give quick access for people who need maintenance, security, all the different driving staff directly so that you don't have to necessarily have a separate radio for all of these things. And they really, this really does interface with existing analog as well as digital radios that are out there. And I'm gonna go into a little bit about what type of radios these things work with. Again, we come as a gateway, but this kind of this gateway really kind of gives you an idea of on the SIP side, it supports obviously all the SIP protocols. And this SIP protocol is really compatible with many of the large cloud providers that are out there. But in terms of the analog side, it really works with the UHF radios between 400 and 470 megahertz. So whether it's an analog or digital radio that you already have, if it falls within the spectrum, now all of a sudden you have this link field bridge that is now being give, gives those people the ability to go back and forth, at least in a, in a, in a half duplex mode, because many of these walkie talkies only have one way communication. It doesn't make it dual way, but what it does is it does establish a way for anybody with a SIP announcement to make these type of calls. Obviously, there's lots of ports that kind of give you a lot of flexibility, but on the SIP end, it does support wideband, which is G722, as well as even the Opus codec. So we really got both of these sides put together and it allows things to kind of put these things. Now, it's also kind of used as a, as a, as a SIP hotspot as well, which also allows for just some micro communication within, the, within the, a, small, a very small community. Just to give you a little bit of idea on, on some of the interfaces, these are just power indicators that tell you whether or not on the gateway has a SIP call. You also give yourself the ability to have whether or not there's an active status light. Some of the ports that are in the back, obviously this is just like a SIP phone where you actually have the ability to connect to your LAN as well as a WAN interface. And you also have TF cards, which gives you a lot of capabilities because when you talk to security, every now and then when you have an incident, people need to lie this thread together. And so what this gateway also does is that you can program it to record any conversation that happens between the front desk or any staff member or any even remote employee that has a remote phone or anything like that so that you can record it on a gigabit uh, memory card so that if you need to go back to investigate the timeline, you have sort of a record on all of these things that tend to happen uh, within this uh, industry. Again, the interconnection between different communications. I talked a little bit about the 400 to 470 megahertz. For those that are interested, you may want to take a look at the radios to see what you have. But really what this does now is like that highway commercial, it really does create a bridge between all the deployed SIP devices within you know, all these different marketplaces, whether it's business, hospitality, campus, hospital, you name it, into the radio communications, which really adds uh, seconds, if not minutes, to any critical situation moving forward. Now you want to talk about easy management. You figure, you know, how do you go ahead and program these things? Like I said, these things are very unique. Uh, unlike phones, where you actually could deploy 50 to 500 phones and they're all configured to the same thing. With this, you're gonna to have to almost program all of these things and get your radio communications in. And when you put the IP address of this Lakeville gateway, you'll see a graphical user interface, just as you see here. For those who are very used to a SIP interface, it'll just say the same graphics. You can obviously update uh, the firmware all the same ways, but this is how you can go ahead and do it. But now you can go ahead and program these radios through this antenna, which allows another access point from going from one radio to another. 
and, and, and giving you a web page interface so that you can program how you want these things to work together. I mentioned earlier about either having a USB interface or a TF card interface. You could accommodate either or because right now, you know, it'll take up to a capacity of 128 gigabits where you could just go ahead and record and it'll just record, you know, old data over new data, but you have a buffer that's inside this gateway so that if you need to go back, you know, a day or two a week, depending on how, what kind of resolution you want to re record it, this gateway will go ahead and kind of record that so that you can go ahead and archive it and dig up exactly the timeline and everything else that you need to go ahead and, 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 and bring to the, to the marketplace. Again, uh, in terms of audio, we try to make it as clear as possible on the SIP side. Again, with these radios, you know, they don't necessarily respond to frequency, but at least you know on the SIP side, it can respond to Opus as well as the high-end audio for G722. Okay, some simple product application. You could have a single call with one radio, or what you can do is you could really set up to really do a group call on this device so that you can have a scenario where you want to reach out to one individual or you can reach out to an entire group of people in security or maintenance in case you have a spill that you need to do there. And plus what you can do is that for the third, you could have multiple gateways in different locations or different departments depending on how you want to do and have them all communicate at the same time. You know, they always say pictures is worth a thousand words. And here's a scenario where you have this right gateway. And on the on the SIP side, obviously, you have this IPPVX, which is, you know, up in the cloud, where you can have a single console IP phone that you can speak to and talk to a specific person. Or you could just have one of our SIP IP phones or any of our SIP intercoms with or without video. Obviously, video isn't, isn't the case here, but you can have this generic intercom that you can have push a button and not only push a button and reach somebody in the central console but that button could also trigger an event on this gateway to allow and, and alert somebody over with the radios as well so it really cuts the communication gap and not only with single call you could also hit multiple calls as well where you can go ahead and have not only direct calls to wi-fi you know sip wi-fi phones directly from our uh phones, but you could also have interfaces to, and multiplex to a particular analog radio group or a digital radio group. As long as it falls within that specific uh, radio uh, frequency, we can go ahead and set that up. And it gives you really a bi-directional way of communicating and stating, you know, whatever message that you want to uh, announce to these people. This is just the last scenario where you have different regions. Obviously, you might have region one or region two. One could be over in Maine. The other one could be in Washington. That can all be reached under one central location. This could be divided by state or even divided by department. You might have one that just it, it entertains uh, for security, another one for maintenance. It really depends on what your scenario is so that you can really multiplex a lot of these different things all together. And it serves as a bridge to really communicate a SIP community all the way through the radio community, which is really, really nice. Some application scenarios that you may want to consider about. You may want to have something that's just you know, fully connected. And keep in mind that when you buy these brand new radios, these radios cost like about a grand a piece. So when you want to fork out several different things, and the cost of this radio is far less of, a, of an application, but it provides a wide open gate so that anybody with a SIP phone can really reach out to people that are that are in management. So it really, in essence, unifies the entire company so that people that are responsible for security can really isolate specific individuals with a SIP phone, you don't necessarily have to give them a radio. You could provide them an existing Wi-Fi deck phone or perhaps uh, you know any wireless or a desk phone that they can use to reach out. And obviously, because you could have one gateway, it becomes highly efficient because you don't have to get a separate radio for every single person. Uh, in the case of building security, obviously this one gateway is just one piece, but on the SIP end, you could have everything ranging from uh, intercoms, you could have IP phones that work in the same network. You could also have this triggered without indoor stations that might push a button. So frankly, a lot of these function keys that you have, whether it's at an access point or our phones, 
can go ahead and reach to all of these people within a campus or in a security. Because now when you talk about radio devices, the, the distances of radios goes for miles, literally. It's almost like a little mini CB radio that gives you the distance and you can now have access to all these different uh, scenarios. Here's a case where you could have a, just an interbuilding where you just have different applications. Obviously, you could have indoor type of uh, intercoms that you might have there, outdoor type of things. You might have alarm systems or even the phone. This is just sort of a, you know, a bill of material that you would may want to consider taking a look at to really gain access to all of these people. So you can have uh, an intercom that sits out in the parking lot somewhere on a campus with a push of a button, you can call somebody in the central office, or you can have this button reach directly out to the gateway. Depending on the process, that's really up to the integrator as well as the end customer and how it wants to work. Obviously, in an industrial park where you're really combining warehouse, you know, again, uh, we've seen a scenario where these things are really considered for a retail environment. Many of the clerks that are out there on the floor all have radios where they can be reached one at a time. You want to reach out to John over at Automotive, you can just reach out to that person, you know, say you say somebody needs maintenance on this aisle, vice versa, or reaching someone at the warehouse. These are all the different applications that when they deploy SIP on the office end, you now have this gateway now that can reach all these different individuals at the same time, depending on what you want to do. Again, the bill of material for this is really kind of the same, coupling up all the different type of endpoints on one end using our gateway and, and to really hooking this up into any radio that exists in the back office or whatever. One last piece I wanted to share with you is really just sort of a campus security. I think I wanted to mention the dif difference with campus is that many people go from building to building. So you might have a person walking around with a Wi-Fi phone. You can couple this Wi-Fi phone that hooks into all the Wi-Fi systems available on campus, or you can use our PA adapter to add a SIP engine with every room if you wanted to, to really have a key into all of these different branches within a specific campus, as well as intercoms. You know, Very often people are concerned about security of students going out to large parking lots. These alarm security would be able to provide that bridge using this gateway to again, reach to anybody that's really out there. Uh, we've gone ahead out and really providing samples to the marketplace and it's really causing a lot of ruckus. If this adds a lot of value, you want to do a deeper dive, give me a call or give um, Julie a call. We'd be more than happy to kind of walk you through it and really, you know, bring the solution in. That's kind of all I have for today. This is, again, the bill of material, which of which one end are all these different SIP endpoints using this bridge and you could obviously talk to each individual person here but now with this gateway now you can access to anybody with a digital or an analog radio that's out there and that's really something that that we're pretty excited about and i appreciate your time today and sharing with me in this technology uh we're actually have this thing in production today if you're interested feel free to reach out to microcom or julie we could be more than happy to go down and do a deeper dive if you're interested in checking this out for your um solutions menu. I'll hand the mic back to Julie to take it from there. Thank you so much, Tommy. Appreciate your uh, wonderful presentation. Thank and you. it looks like I have some questions for you. Sure. So, uh, all righty then. Let's get started with the first question. Here we go. How does Fanville ensure the security of communications through the Linkville series? Um, well, th there are two. There are two uh, pieces uh, within the SIP side. Obviously, on the SIP end, there is you know the SIP it alone has its own uh, security protocol within the SIP environment, so it can't be necessarily hacked into on, on the SIP side. That's why a lot of that technology is adopted in, in businesses. On the radio end, I mean, on the radio end, it's a matter of keying in on the right frequency as well as the channels on the radio side. So, you know, we're not here to hamper any security level that's already existing in the radio, but in essence, open up a bridge so that on the SIP end, it allows for people to go ahead and tune in. On the radio side, some people have an open communication where you might have one person and do a bridge that listens to all calls, or you could have an individual call where each person 
on the radio end can listen to its own specific calls. So that's really dictated by the end customer, and we uh, we enable, or, or we, let's put it this way, we don't disable any existing security measures that's already in place on the analog digital side as well as the SIP side. Excellent. Thanks, Tommy. Next question here for you. What audio codecs are supported by the W712 for high quality voice communication? Sure, no problem. In fact, um, that question uh, is easily uh, addressed right here. Not only does it support the G711, which is kind of the baseline codec that everybody does, but if you happen to have the bandwidth uh, to support high end, it also supports G722 for high definition audio. Now, one of the things that we also added on is we also added Opus because very often bandwidth within a particular campuses go up and down depending on what the, the, the radio traffic is. And when you actually have traffic that goes down in bandwidth, what ends up happening is you can't necessarily push high definition audio on a low bandwidth environment and you'll end up having skippy voice when it comes through because it, it demands a minimum. What Opus does is Opus is a codec that allows uh, the bandwidth allocation for voice to keep the integrity of the voice together so that if bandwidth were to all of a sudden go down because someone's trying to download a big graphic image on the network, then then the, the, the resolution of the voice will go down, but it'll keep the integrity of the voice so that you can understand what that other person does. But on the other hand, if you have bandwidth that frees up, it'll also support high definition Kodak equivalent to the G722 on the high end as well. So it does really either one, but you know, Opus is something that we include in our products that we wanna make sure that, 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 that um, any client who actually has this on their end will have this to support their communication on both ends. Thank you so much for that, Tommy. Next question here for you. Mm -hmm. How does Scanville support firmware updates for their devices, including the W712 IP phone? Ah, yeah, no problem. In fact, um, to do that, what I could do is I could almost do a, a demo. What you can do is, on our website, you can go to fanville.com. And once you go to fanville.com, there's a support tab that goes across. And when you hit support, there's a there's a tab called downloads. And when you hit the download key on the left hand side, you will actually see Linkville as well as our phones, intercoms, door access points. And you just pick out the specific gateway that you like. And once you pick out the same model, you'll all of a sudden see the latest and greatest firmware. As I showed on this presentation, you can see what firmware has been loaded into the link fill, and I would always recommend to load the latest firmware possible. And you can go to that tab, make sure that you have the latest revision. If not, you just have to click the update tab, point it, download the, 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 the image onto your PC or whatever, and then you could just point it to where it is, upload it, upload it to this radio, and that's all it takes. It really is pretty simple. It's no different than sending a picture on your on your mobile phone to a friend or family member. Um, you could just select where it's located, upload it, it'll, it'll just upload all on its own, and when it's done, it'll tell you, and then you could just log back in and configure this device to do whatever you want it to do. Thank you so much for that, Tommy. No Following problem. up with another question for you, here we go. Can you provide guidance on the optimal deployment scenarios for the ROIP gateway? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, let's just talk uh, in an SMB environment, right? Uh, for example, in, in the case of, of, of say you have a, an off-campus uh, parking lot, right? An off-airport parking lot. It's usually like one booth or one building that has staff members that can check in your ticket when you check in, when you check out. But the good news is it's sharing the same network. So all the network protocols that you would consider for deploying telephones it's the same way with Linkville. So what you would do is you would put this on a network, kind of almost the same place where you put the gateway, because somewhere there's a gateway that, that connects all of these radios as well. And you could put it right there so that it has a central access to all of these networks. If you have multiple buildings with multiple departments, this thing is, is capable of tying in multiple radios, but if you want to separate the two because they're on separate networks, 
then you can put in a separate link field gateway on each network. So depending on which network you're on, you almost have a separate bridge depending on what your network configuration. So if it's on the same network, you could pretty much accomplish this with one gateway. If you have multiple networks, then you might be able to have a gateway to accommodate each particular uh, network. That's just one scenario. Sounds great. Thanks, Tommy. Couple more questions. Mm -hmm. Can you discuss any built-in redundancy features in the ROIP gateway for mission critical applications? Redundant gateway. Wow. I guess, um, uh, I mean, I don't know if there's, there's, there's redundancy. I do know that on the SIP end, there are multiple ways that you can get into. You could, you, you actually have the ability um uh you have one sip call one call the only thing that i can think about off the top of my head honestly you could have multiple gateways that sort of back up with each other um you know if one gateway to fail uh you know that way you would lose connection with with the radio but there's nothing off the top of my head head for backup but what i'll do uh, julie is you could take the contact information for that person and and i'll take an action item to really see if there's any sort of backup system for it because i don't know off the top of my head outside of buying a uh, you know another gateway which is a brute force way but i don't know if there's something in the gateway itself that has a backup system no problem we can do that tommy couple yep. more questions here we go let's see what are the default credentials for fanville web ui um, well, the default Anvil credentials, I mean, when you say user interface, um, to get access to all of these devices, you just have to know what, um, what IP address is assigned to each gateway. Take, for example, a Linkville gateway or even a Fanville phone or a Fanville intercom. All of these uh, so-called endpoint devices are assigned uh, an IP address. It's typically a 192.x.x or a 10. whatever, like an internal address. And all that person needs to do from a manual deployment is take their PC. You could have a, a browser that you use, whether it could be Chrome or what have you. Put in the IP address within that browser interface, as long as you're on the same network, then you'll be prompted uh, an admin and a password in order to get into the user interface. Now, that's one way to do it manually. The other way is we also have a device management system, which if you wanted to deploy many of these things, whether it be these get this gateway or many phones, it's a way that you can automatically have this and you can have a template that will allow you to set up basic configurations for many of the regions that you do. You know, you could be an East Coast business and you want to deploy a handful of these. You don't want to necessarily configure all of the, these phones, because when it comes in, you have to set the region, set the type of phone compatibility. So you have a template that you can do, and it'll program like 90% of all of the basic functions that you need to do over our device management systems as well. So there's really two ways for mass, mass provisioning, and you could also do it for one-way provisioning, just as I mentioned earlier. Thank you so much for that, Tommy. Couple more questions still here. Yep. Here we go. How do I find the IP address of my Fanville phone? Ah, there are several different ways. Um, many times, if, if you're given permission, um, you could you would have to have router access. Most end users don't necessarily have the ability to do this, but I do know that many off many times people can go to a phone pick on a menu and say, what's the standard configuration? And sometimes the standard configuration will be able to give you the IP address that's assigned on the phone. And you can go through a menu interface. Sometimes integrators will lock users out of this because some users are also, you know, they're not hackers, but they're sort of like technology tech centric. So they'll go and say, what happens if I try to get in? But even if they try to get in, what ends up happening is they'll be prompted for an admin username and password anyway. So it's not like they could have access to do many things. So that's how they get into the user interface is really doing that uh, by looking at the menu. Another way is that if you have to have control of your router, again, these are things that is usually hidden behind the walls. You have to talk to an IT person. So when you plug it in, it'll say, ah, you know, your, your, the IP address assigned for this link build 
is XYZ number, that's usually assigned by the router that's within your network, and you would have to speak to the IT person there to say what network, what what IP address was associated with the MAC address, because every device has a specific specific MAC address that's assigned to it. So that once you match up the MAC, it'll give you the IP. Once you have the, that address, you could put it on your browser, and then you could just go to town uh, doing that, assuming that you have the admin password to get in. So thank you, Tommy. Last question here for you. Sure. Regarding the fan bill management system, can yep. you tell us, is it paid, is it free, or by subscription? Oh, the, the FanBuild device management system, we provide that free of charge uh, to our partners. Uh, anybody who's interested in doing that, it really comes in two flavors. For those partners who are working with a, with a cloud-based system that has their own provisioning service, tier one that we have, just all it does is it routes control over any device they want to deploy over to their PBX so that their PBX can just deploy it and run their own, you know, uh, management to all these different endpoints that are already qualified. Tier two is actually combining that as well as the redirection to one tool, which is the fan build device management system, which allows you to kind of control the templates and the type of things. Now, yeah, you'd have to kind of understand a bit of programming to kind of work it, but once you program one phone, then, you, then you're basically on to program anything down the line and you can then do the basic configurations automatically uh, you know, on your own with, with your own cloud-based system. And this is not something that, that we charge for. We provide that free of charge to any integrator or reseller partner that's out there. Tommy, thank you so much for answering all of those questions for us today. And no also- yeah, thank you to everyone uh, attending today's webinar. And if anyone has any further questions, uh, like Tommy mentioned as well, please feel free to contact their sales rep or email us at sales at microcomtech.com. And if you wish to view any of the products mentioned or shown here today, please remember the webinar presentation here has been recorded and will be uploaded to our Microcom YouTube channel so we can all view it again. Thank you, Tommy. Looking forward to the next webinar with you. I appreciate so much the information that you bring to us each time. Everybody have a fantastic day. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye now.